Hello friends, thank you for joining us here on our channel for a new series. In the month of February, we are going to be going through this book, which is At Home with Madame Chic from Jennifer L. Scott. I covered her previous book over on my other channel and I've been absolutely loving the series. So I thought I would bring the home content here to this channel and show you what I've been learning and how I've been implementing it. You might already love your home and know the value of appreciating it, but most people at some point in their lives go through a period of feeling dissatisfied with where they live. This is perfectly normal. It is human nature to want to upgrade. You might want to move to a safer neighborhood or a home with a big backyard so you can fulfill your dream of growing vegetables. We must hold on to these dreams, but in the meantime, we must not wish away the life we currently have. The key is to appreciate where you live now and learn how to thrive there. It may not be easy, and I say this from experience. If you're unfamiliar with me, you may not know my name is Nicole and I am Canadian, but I now live in the UK. And one of the most challenging things when I moved to the UK was and is, is the fact that I had just finished renovating my house in Canada. And then I came here and my husband was in the midst of renovating this house here. So it's taken me some time to fall in love with the home just because there has been a lot to do. And I think just because I had finished renovating my house at home to then feel like I never had the chance to enjoy it, I came to England with a little bit of renovation fatigue, if you will. Now, the other thing that I think I had to get used to is, is that when I first started talking to my husband, we started talking online and I didn't know he was going to become my husband, but I was looking at moving to Bath, which is about 25 minutes away but the look of Bristol and Bath could not be any more different. And so I think that was another thing that I had to just get accustomed to. Bristol is beautiful in its own right, but I don't think you can compare Bristol and Bath. And I think that it's taken me some time to get settled and learn to love Bristol in the ways that maybe I was loving Bath. So that brings me to the first thing that I learned from this book. So the first step that Jennifer has for us is to visit your home with the same eyes that you had when you chose it. Because usually there is a reason that you picked the place that you live at, unless you're still living at home. And even though I didn't pick this house for myself, I did pick my house in Canada. And I have to say, I did fall out of love with that house before I renovated it. So I can understand what Jennifer is trying to get across here. Now, although I didn't pick this house, there are still elements of this house that I do like. And there are elements of this house that is great. And I think that I have had to sit down and remind myself of what those elements are because even though it's not necessarily in the location that I would like or in the style that I would like there are still very many benefits to living in this house and I have definitely been taking the time to revisit some of the features that are amazing about it. Now the next thing that Jennifer mentions in the book is to get motivated. Did you ever have a time in your life where maybe you weren't doing things to keep your house looking good and presenting it well? I definitely went on a journey. I was not the cleanest person when I was younger. And then I moved in with my aunt and my grandma and my grandma was at home and she would clean up after me. And I just would then leave things all around the floor. And it was only when there's two moments that were massive pivotal moments in my life in regards to keeping a home and the first one was I bought a house <laughs> and no one else was going to clean it for me but even I would say for the first two years that I bought my house I was still really messy like it's embarrassing I'll spare the details but when I got a boyfriend and he moved in with me that changed a lot because I don't know we just took more of a traditional role I think that wasn't him, that was more so me that took more of a tra traditional role and I didn't want to have the house a mess with my partner there. And then the second thing that changed was also that I got a job working for a lady who unfortunately had a accident and she was in a wheelchair. And she, bless her, she actually just commented on something of mine on Facebook today, oddly enough, but she would give orders so fast. and. 
because it would kind of annoy me because she would say pick up this and pick up that and pick up this like I tried to be one step ahead of her so it wouldn't annoy me <laughs> so if I knew she was gonna like tell me to go pick up that towel over there before it could come out of her mouth and annoy me that she's mentioning it I was trying to catch the towel as it was falling down so those were like two major moments in life that made me change and get to be a little bit more proactive and motivated around the house. Now the next thing that Jennifer mentions in her book is don't neglect. Have you ever had somebody come over at the last minute? Just this past weekend, it was actually my birthday at the time of me filming this, and my husband's cousins came over and ooh, I was never more thankful that I cleaned up upstairs because they are a little bit older than Paul and so they have more experience with homes and stuff and so they were looking around the house and they were giving us some tips and tricks about how we can renovate and so they went upstairs and I was like, thank you. Thank you for making me change <laughs> because I wasn't embarrassed when they went upstairs, but take notice of those things that you rush to do if somebody is just popping by. Is it that you're trying to clean up the dishes in the sink? Is it that you're trying to clean the baseboards? For me, we definitely need to kind of stop neglecting the baseboards. That's definitely one thing I'm convicted by, but for the most part, we are on top of things because we're not neglecting them. So ask yourself, what would be the first thing that you would be rushing to go clean or fix up if someone just randomly popped by? Are you absolutely dying and so bitter because <laughs> you need help in the house? You could totally enlist help. Paul and I don't have kids yet. If you follow our channel here religiously, you know that. <laughs> you know it's a journey that we're on and it's not going smoothly. <laughs> but we don't have children yet, but that's one thing that I've had to really learn to flex the muscle of asking for help. I didn't say that in the most elegant way possible, but what I mean by that is, is that because I typically do things better, I wasn't asking Paul for help and then equally, I have more experience with doing things around the house and acts of service is my love language. I love being able to take care of somebody. I'm not the mushiest, gushiest person. Words of affirmation is not my love language. And with that, I love doing things around the house to show my love for somebody. But if you are someone who is still working even though you're at home. I, I would call myself a stay at home, work at home wife. And if you are that person, there's so much that gets added onto your plate if you aren't asking for help. You can't be working full time at home and doing all the work around the house yourself. I think that I'm quite a traditional person and Paul's quite a traditional person, but I've had to learn to ask him for help. And sometimes it goes smoothly and sometimes it doesn't, but I also know that it's not sustainable for me to continue to do things all on my own. Which that brings me to the next point that Jennifer had for us in this book. Whether you are delegating to a cleaner or a friend, if they're helping, or your children or your partner, you need to be able to delegate and you can't delegate unless you have systems in place. That's the biggest thing that I had to learn in a different way, but this past year I brought on people to help me within my business and I really struggled telling them what to do and in what order because I didn't have systems in place and that goes the same for your home. So ask yourself, maybe go and do these things in your house once and make notes of what it is that needs to be done in what order and when. Now, the last thing that Jennifer reminds us in this book is that this is not a race. Regardless of if you have help or not, I think we need to dedicate a little bit of time to maintaining these things on a daily basis. If you have a cleaner, maybe they are doing the big deep clean once a week and you are maintaining things on the day to day when you need to. One of the things that has really helped me is to try and tackle these things on my to-do list with as much joy as possible. Whether that means I am putting on an audiobook or I am putting on music, whatever it is that is gonna keep me engrossed in the task and find joy in it is what I do to make the task 
get done and make it possible. You know what I find? Have you ever drove all the way home and then you're sat on your driveway and then maybe there's a song that comes on that you don't want to get out of the car until that song finishes? Or you, you know, maybe you're listening to an audiobook or a podcast and you don't want to get out of the car until that audiobook or podcast finishes, I find that that's the thing that you need to put on to entertain you while you're doing these kind of mundane tasks. Anyways, my friends, that is it for this video. If you are on a homemaking journey like I am, I would love if you joined this little community. I have got so much in store for you in the month of February. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you will enjoy those videos too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.